Thank you for inviting me into your home today. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to speak with you about some exciting happenings here in the Diocese of Syracuse. As you know, several months ago I asked that a plan be presented to me by October 1st, indicating how best we might pursue the service of God's people here in the diocese in the next number of years. Well, October 1st is here, and a plan has been presented, and it's really a working document. It's a document that will help us as we make plans for the future together. I'm extremely grateful to all of you who have participated in this process, to our priests and deacons, to our consecrated religious, to the lay people, the backbone of our parishes, who have been so very much a part of this process. We're grateful, very grateful, for all that you've done the many hours spent in meetings, the gift of your time and talents, your love for your parish and your love for the church have been shown. For all of these things we give praise and thanks to God. It has always been our intention to devise a plan that had the service of God's people as our foremost consideration. And I believe that we have done that. I have no great plans to announce closings of parishes. I know how important your parish is to you. But we do have to recognize that our plans involve some changes. In some of instances, we, as we move to the future, we know that we're not going to have the full-time service of a priest in each of our parishes. We're working at developing lay leadership to work with our deacons and religious and our priests as we continue to bring you the message of the Lord. Now, change is part of our life. Change is growth. Change is an everyday occurrence. We see it in our parishes when a priest is changed. We see it when there's a change in mass schedules. Parishioners change. There's liturgical changes changes in ministerial roles. Change has been with us all the days of our lives, and it will be with us in the future. And so some change requires us to have a new way of thinking, a new way of looking at how we can serve our people. a new way of reaching out in service to those who come to us in need. The demographics of our region have changed. The economy is giving us pause for consideration. The availability of clergy all of this falls into play. But what we've never lost sight of is your need and your comfort and your support of your parish church. And so as we move forward, we're hoping to keep our parishes open but we're recognizing that we need to work in clusters. Three or four parishes working together so that the needs of God's people throughout the diocese 
will continue to be met. One of our great needs is evangelization. We need to reach out to people that we know should be in the pews with us and try and encourage them to a more active practice of their Catholic faith. Pope Francis is good at telling us is that we need to go out into the peripheries to find the poor and the marginalized, people on the outskirts of society, to ask them to join us in prayer. That's a big challenge. Require effort, sustained effort. But the future of our parishes depends upon that also. So let me be clear. I have no intentions at this time to close parishes. But we all have to look at how parishes are operated. in a variety of ways. And we have to be open to the new. Those who have gone before us were constantly challenged. When they came here to our country, a new land, a new language, new customs, new practices. A change was part of their lives, and change will be part of our lives. And I hope that you will be open and generous in recognizing this need, and in helping all of us together meet the needs of the future. I've set a series of meetings up with our priests to help us together decide how we can move forward. There will be some further meetings of the pastoral care areas. There will be announcements in your bulletin, in your parish, and here on the web of the Diocese of Syracuse. Pastoral planning has been going on since the time of Christ. In each generation, people have had to reach out and decide how best to get the gospel message out there. Ours is a different time and a different place. But nevertheless, we need to move forward. I hope, more than anything, that you will join me in prayer and action as we plan for the future. Your prayer, your involvement is absolutely essential to the vibrancy of our diocese. I pray that God will bless you and your loved ones, give you openness of mind and heart as we move forward together. May God bless you and those whom you love. And again, my thanks, my gratitude, my appreciation, and my love for all of you.